Hello everyone and welcome back. As we have seen in our last lesson, we are now storing the course data here in the store, but the order of the courses is incorrect. We would like to order our courses based on the sequential number property so that our NGRX course is the first one on the list. We can achieve that by sorting our entities here based on the sequential number field, so each course has a sequential number. When we sort our entities, this means that here our IDs array is going to have here our course ID sorted using the course sequential number. Right now we have sort of a default sort order where we are sorting the courses numerically by their ID. But that's not what we are looking for here. So let's see how can we do that. We are going to switch here to our program and we are going to open our reducer for the courses entity that we have defined using NGRX entity. If you remember, the adapter is a utility provided by NGRX entity that makes it easy to handle the entity format. So here in the creation of the adapter, we can pass in here some configuration. One of the options that we have here is a sort comparer. So here we can provide a comparison function that is going to compare two course entities and this function is going to decide what is the relative sort order of those two entities. So this is what we need in order to sort the courses correctly. If we open here the course entity, we are going to find that below here the entity definition, we have here a sorting function ready to use. It's called compare courses. And as we can see, this takes two courses and compares them based on the sequential number. So this is the function that we need to pass in here to the sort compare property in order to sort our courses correctly. Notice that the create entity adapter also had here another property called select ID. So what is this select ID and when is it useful? Well, in our case, our course entity has here an identity field called ID. So this is the default field name where NGRX entity expects to find the entity key each entity needs a unique identifier. So if NGRX entity, while adding the entities to the store in the entity format, finds a property named ID, then this one will be used as the identifier by default. But imagine that instead of ID, our course entity would use another name for its unique identifier, such as, for example, course ID. Well, this is not recommended. If you can, you should avoid having this type of properties and instead simply naming them as ID in every entity. But if your course identity would use here a custom identifier name, then we could inform NGRX entity of where to find the ID by providing here a function. So this function is going to take one entity, which is going to be of type course, and here we are going to be able to return the property that uniquely identifies the course, in this case, the course ID. So select ID is helpful whenever we have non-standard names for the unique identifier in a given entity. In the case of our program, we are not going to be using select ID because our course entity uses the default ID name, which is the recommended approach. Let's now confirm that our data is now getting sorted correctly. We are going to switch here to a larger window. Let's go ahead and refresh our application. And when the loading is completed, we are going to see that this time around the data is correctly sorted. So if we click here on the last action in the action list and we open here the IDs array, we're going to see that this time around, the order of the IDs does not correspond to the order of the keys. So this time around, our courses are getting ordered by the sequential number property as expected. Let's now in the next lesson implement the last missing feature of this data fetching solution for the courses data. We're going to make sure that we only fetch the data from the backend if needed.